Hello and welcome back to Guided Hacking. This is Fred K, and today we're going to be taking a look at malwaretrafficanalysis.net. Malwaretrafficanalysis.net is a website that both provides technical blog posts on malware traffic and also traffic analysis exercises. Let's take a quick look around at the traffic analysis blog posts where you can find details on different infection chains and the traffic that goes on during them along with IOCs and other coverage of these infections. Going back, we'll be concentrating on traffic analysis exercises within this video. And these exercises are here to teach you how to do malware traffic analysis and the training exercises where you will be analyzing PCAPs of network traffic. There are all kinds of different exercises, but today we're gonna to be going over the January Unit 42 Wireshark quiz. All of these traffic analysis exercises usually will be done within Wireshark. So looking at the exercise, we're going to scroll down and we can get some background about how the malware has infected the system and what it's done. It was dropped from an ISO image, executed from what was in that ISO image, and then that executable has HTTP traffic for an encoded payload. The payload is decoded and then data exfiltration is done over SMTP. So what we want to be doing is looking for HTTP traffic and SMTP traffic. Scrolling down, there's a lot more information along with the Unit 42 tutorials and videos where they give you some information about how to use Wireshark and provide a workshop. This is really useful if you're just being introduced to Wireshark and some of the techniques that we use in this video, they've outlined here. I really recommend watching these. Going back to the exercise, we can download our quiz material from the GitHub repository with password infected. And then the quiz questions are the following. When did the malicious traffic start? What is the victim's IP address, MAC address, host name, user account name? How much RAM does the victim's host have? What type of CPU, public IP address of the victim host? And what type of account login data was stolen by the malware? So in this video, we're going to be attempting to go through the PCAP and answering these nine questions. But before we go on to the PCAP, they do provide a bit more information about the SMTP traffic includes various login credentials from the infected host. Of note, this traffic does not contain legitimate credentials. We populated the host with fake login data before we ran the malware. Despite the fake data, this traffic provides a better understanding of data stolen by agent Tesla variants like Origin Locker. So this analysis is based on traffic from the Origin Logger malware. If you wanted to find out more about that before you engage in the PCAP, you can go to Malpedia and simply just look up the malware family name here and you'll find some coverage on it also written by Unit 42. And if you wanted to know what to expect, read through this first and then look at the PCAP. So I now have the PCAP open within Wireshark and looking at the start of the data, we see some ARP protocol requests, uh, some DNS requests, and then some TCP traffic and HTTP traffic. So it starts off with a broadcast here asking who has 192.168.1.27 and then tell the router here and the router replies with with this following IP is at this MAC address. So we need confirmation that this IP address and MAC address might be the victim data that we're looking for to answer some of the questions that are provided with the exercise, specifically IP address and MAC address. But scrolling down, we instantly get it by seeing this get request to this PNG file. Now, if we look at this PNG file, we can see some encoded data here. And if you read through how Origin Logger works, it will state that a lot of encoded payloads are being used during a victim's infection. And that's also mentioned within the exercise information on the Unit 42 website back at the top of the site. So you can see here that the loader.exe begins the infection process and HP traffic for encoded payload. And we found that encoded payload here, meaning that this source of 192.168.127 requested this PNG file. And we have confirmation that this is in fact our infected host. So we can copy down some of the information provided here. First saying that the victim's IP address is 192.168.1.27 and the MAC address can just be copied from this request.
now that those have been copied down, we'll go on to answer some more of these questions. But first, when did the malicious traffic start in UTC? Well, if we go to the HTTP traffic of when it gets that encoded payload, we can go into that request and looking through the headers of the response, we find a date time here of 05 January 2023 at 10.51 GMT time. So we can paste that in and we've already answered our first three questions. Now we need to go through and look at the Windows victims, Windows host name and user account name. And to do that, Unit 42 recommends this request here. Now this request here is looking for NBNS, SMB or SMB2 traffic on the network. And these are common requests done by Windows machines. Looking through them, we already get an indication of some information that's passed to the server from our infected host here. And looking through this packet, we can find some information about the infected machine that might answer our question. Going to the bottom of the Microsoft Windows browser protocol, we can find master browser server name is desktop Win11 PC. Now, this is a common name scheme for Windows computers, and we can use that common name scheme as a confirmation that this is actually the computer name. So going into our answers, we can answer that the host name is the following desktop win 11 PC. Now we just need to go on to answer the user account name and some more details about the infection. So to do this, usually the user account name, victim host, and information about the system is provided in exfiltrated data by the malware. If you read up on origin logger, you'll see that it sends this kind of data to the C2. So we should look for the SMTP traffic that was mentioned in the exercise to find that exfiltrated data. And to do that in Wireshark, all we need to do is put in SMTP to find SMTP traffic. Now we find all kinds of different traffic with a lot of information already. Already we can see the infected PC's name, but we want to take all of this data and instead of going manually packet by packet and looking through it, we want to see it in a more easy way. So we can right click on the first packet, go down to follow TCP stream, and it'll put all of the packets into one single stream that's easy to read through. At the start, we see some connections to the SMTP server and then some responses from that it logs in the authentication succeeds and it starts creating a email so it says the mail is from this following email and the recipient is this following email and then we can see the content of the email with a lot of exfiltrated information that's going to be super useful to answer our questions First, we can see the username of the Windows PC, which is Windows 11 user. So we can copy that into the user account name. Then going down, we see information about the CPU. So we'll take that and also answer our, what type of CPU is used by the victim host. And then there's another question of how much RAM does the victim host have? So we can go through and find this RAM. And then what is the public IP address of the victim's host? Well, a lot of malware will request out to find the public IP of the infected computer and origin logger is no different. So we can take the IP address that's provided in the XFIL as the public IP and copy that and put that into our answers. Then what type of account login data was stolen by the malware? And this is what you see here. You see all kinds of different HTML formatted data and you could paste this into your browser to get it into an easier format. But just looking through it, we can see that we see an application for Thunderbird and application for Edge Chromium. So we can say that what type of account login data was stolen by the malware. It login credentials from email client and, and that answers all of our questions. So we could continue looking through the PCAP and trying to get a few more pieces of information that might not be within the questions. But I'm going to go and check my answers within the exercise site. So going down to the analysis exercises on the malware traffic analysis site, we can look at the answers page, which will provide our answers. So when does it start? We have the correct time, correct IP address, correct Mac address, correct Windows host name, and all of the other details are correct. I hope that this was a good introduction to the malware traffic analysis site and how we can use Wireshark to solve some of those problems. Until next time, goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads.
If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.